Hello everyone, Cursed Valor here, and today I'm going to be talking about why Ryom and Sukuna is stronger than the visually impaired. I am of course referring to everyone's favourite autistic chimpanzee, Gojo Satoru. In this video I will be joined by my fellow monkey screecher Wook. Unfortunately for us however, Wook has a severe dependence on DMT and as a result has a crippling addiction to sexually assaulting human ears. Headphone users be prepared, Wook goes in hard, and he goes in dry. We We're here talking about why Sukuna beats the visually impaired. <laughs> Shut the fuck. <laughs> the fuck up. That shit was I'm funny. I can't lie. I'm gonna put that in the video. <laughs> What's like the biggest thing for? I think I think the first thing people bring up is like, yeah, the statement. <laughs> yeah, the the famous statement, the Gojo statement. I the can, infamous statement. I can beat Sukuna. If he got all his power back, that's uh, it's not, it's not a good statement at all. Yeah, the the next chapter, right? Like Sukuna literally says he'll kill him. Gojo's like a super arrogant character, and um, e even beyond that, there's like a lot of reasons why Gojo's like calculation of Sukuna's full power should be like really inaccurate. You want to get into that, Valor? Yeah. So first off, like, does he even know how strong like? old Sukuna is, or current Sukuna is, like, because we know these fingers are actually exponential. They're not linear, um, like, we know that from Jogo. Yeah, I, I can go further into depth for that, right? Like, yeah. we know when the uh, two-finger Sukuna first encounters the finger bear, he's, like, demonstrably above, like, just a two times increase of him. He's, like, blitz fucking him constantly. He's beating the shit out of him. He's, like, making fun of him. He's, like, we're in the same grade, dude. Like, come on. Um, yeah, like and then, and then, oh, yeah, you can go ahead. I was just gonna say, even like, even the the most blatant example is definitely like Jogo, when he literally is like, yeah, I, 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 he went into that fight expecting there to be this kind of difference, and then he was surprised at how much bigger that difference actually was. Yeah, so if it, it's literally... linear scalings, like he should have been a pretty spot on. It'd just be like, oh, mm -hmm. just double my power, and you'll probably have about how he, how much he, how strong he is, or whatever. But no, right. it's it's pretty if evident that he's the... far above that. If you remember in the uh, the earlier chapters, right, we have, Ghetto gives him an estimate of his power, and when Gojo or Jogo is fighting Sukuna, he flashes back to this. He's like, "Yeah, I thought there would be a big difference." He's like, basing the current amount of fingers Sukuna has compared to his own. He's saying it's even beyond this, right? So, what we're getting here is it's not just you know one finger plus two fingers in power; it's one finger plus another finger plus another exponential factor increase. So that's one reason Gojo's statement should be inaccurate. He's only fighting. A one finger Yuji, right? There's no other finger to like base it off of. And even then, like he's like folding like one finger Sakuna, and in the anime especially, because Sakuna, I actually saw this recently. Sakuna sees him fighting, and he's like, "Is he that fast?" No, it's something else. He's he's like he directly sees his speed. He's like, "Is it? Is he just that fast?" He's like, "No, actually, it's something else that's allowing him to beat me right now." And, and so personally, that early I, on, Sakuna wasn't really impressed by his like stats. It was more so something else that was leading him to assume it, go to. It's actually it's actually likely it's in his uh, infinity technique. Sakuna's trying to hit him and he's not touching him. So he's just assuming that Gojo is so fast he's dodging him and he's realizing no, yeah. I just like can't hit him. Um an another funny thing, right? It's now that we've like established why this statement is like really inaccurate and shouldn't be held to like any value. Gojo still uses this like, like Sakuna as a measuring stick, which should be way stronger, or sorry, way weaker than the actual Sakuna is, he's still saying it would be tough for him. Like, yeah. He's like, so, he's, he's massively underestimating, like, Sakuna, and he still believes, oh, yeah, this might be a bit tough. And we know that the way Gojo speaks about himself and the people around him, as he's, like, high and mighty, I wouldn't, people say he has a god complex, I don't think he has a god complex, but he does, he definitely thinks, arrogant. That, he thinks highly of himself. And he's like, For even sure. this kind of like, arrogant character is like, yeah, this would be a bit tough. But he's not even no, afraid to admit that people are like, difficult for him. Like, in the in the light novels, he especially, he's like, yeah, Michizune. Mm -hmm. I was about to get into that. Him. Yeah. And, and we know, we know Michizune is a, is a powerful cursed spirit. We also know that Sakuna is just like, the strongest cursed spirit. So there's like, levels to this, where we have... We have these, you know, three great vengeful spirits. Go just descended from one of them. He's saying, yeah, like, I think I, I'm the strongest, but this dude, he, he doesn't say it'd be a little tough. He says, like, it would be, like, a serious, tricky issue for him, and then Sakuna's just, like, above that. Like, the entire yeah. Golden Age is just below Sakuna. Back when, I believe this was when they go to fight that first finger bearer, the cursed womb, 
they say Gojo on so. a trip, and he's actually um, that trip is when he goes with Nanami, and he's like he's constantly Shoko, comparing yeah. these. He's constantly comparing these different like castes to to um, other castes and to other people, and he directly says, "Wow, if um, to be able to bring someone back from the dead, that would truly make you a king of a, a king of castes." And I found that really interesting. Because, like, we've seen Sukuna actually display this ability to, like, resurrect someone's heart. He does that to Yuji. It's also stated in the fan book that even if someone is already medically dead, if a certain amount of time hasn't passed, it's, like, still within the realm of his reverse curse technique to bring them back. It's not, it's not even that just, like, Yuji doesn't have his heart. It's, like, they can literally be fucking dead. Um, I think, I think the next thing we should get into is probably speed. Um... Oh, for definitely, yeah. Yeah. Gojo, like... His speed is actually a lot less impressive than I think people give him credit. Or, or sorry, less impressive than people think it is, right? Yeah. L let's think about it. What, what does Gojo do? He, he beats up Jogo. hasn't already done. <laughs> yeah, that, there's that. Um, I, I use people like... I see people use this statement of like, Naobito being like, reputed to be the, the fastest sorcerer, including Gojo. But, um, for one, that's like reputation. Gojo's got a fat reputation and Naobito's been like, alive for a long time so he's time to build up this reputation and another thing is it can just be referring to like his teleportation as well that have to be his like raw movement or combat speed um because but it's like they when they, they directly like reference the uh, Nalbito stuff mm -hmm. they say he's known to be the fastest excluding mm -hmm. gojo so gojo is mm -hmm. really known to be the fastest that doesn't mean he actually is the fastest which is like i'm going to explain like a later video on ghetto like why people can actually be faster than uh, Gojo pretty consistently, but to to stay on topic, it comes down to Gojo Gojo's law, right? Gojo's law is that he's the fastest. He's, or he's just, the strongest. He or could, yeah, he could literally have been like faster than Naobito one time, like actually be, have been faster than Naobito, like through movement speed, and he's just like, yeah, he's just the fastest now. And now people, because people know this. They have this general idea that, or this knowledge that, okay, well, he's he, Gojo is probably the fastest, right? If some unknown person, like say Yuji, came around and was just faster than him, well, no one would know that he's the fastest. He's yeah. faster than Gojo, um, so everyone would uh, still claim Gojo to be the fastest. A, a great example of this is um, Naoya, right? Yeah. You know, Naoya has like the same uh, curse technique as Nabito, um, but he's like younger. He's more youthful in the clan. Probably has as much time to build up a rep, but he's got like way better speed feats than Naomi 2 does. He's scaling to these, these super strong characters like Yuji and like Choso, who should be way stronger than like their Shibuya counterparts who are scaling above or, or two and people similar to like Naobito. So he's just like got these way better feats, but he doesn't have like the reputation, right? Yeah, and even to expand, like this is the same Yuji that was reacting to Yuda while he was trying to kill him. Now, granted, that's like a whole topic in and of itself of, well, okay, what was oh, yeah. in there, but it's still very interesting to note that Yuji, while, like, kind of suicidal... Weakened and suppressed. Yeah, was still yeah. able to fight almost on par with this Yuda to the point where he had to summon Rika or a replica of Rika or whatever, however you interpret that scene. He had to bring out this kind of power in order to stop yuji and this yuji was not even at his full capabilities and even then still was just like i can't really be bothered and he's just holding back he, he literally tags him with a car right it's, yeah. it's it's bad but um yeah like i, I think this is a good time to like tie into the statements of gojo being the strongest as well yeah um so I think a lot of people have a misinterpretation of what strongest means in JJK. It's actually really consistent that it's referring to like technique or hacks that they have. Well, which would be super consistent because like Infinity is a, a broken hacks, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but we, we have like the instance where Ghetto is talking to Mahito and they're talking about how like curse techniques are actually what dictate like this world, right? Um, flashback to like hidden inventory. We know that Ghetto and Gojo were considered the strongest together, but once Gojo refines his technique, the infinity, to have, like, uh, to be passive, essentially, then Ghetto says, no, you're the strongest. So it's not after Gojo gets, like, physically stronger or faster, it's after he's, like, refined his technique. Yeah, and so. it's interesting that even after a year after this awakened Gojo is running around, it's only now that Ghetto is saying, oh, he's now the strongest, he has become the strongest. It's only now that he's saying this, even after a year of well, what's likely training, they literally became special grade sorcerers in that time, and he mm -hmm. only acknowledges it at this point. 
So, yeah. No, no, that's not to say that you can't be strong in other ways, like cursed energy control. Like, sure, Yuji, sure. Yuji has like very little cursed energy or relatively small amounts of cursed energy, but it's so potent and he can control it so well that he is just like Yuta level. He is just like yeah. This. He literally like he he cracks Yuta's like blade. It's like overflowing with cursed energy practically. So it's important to note that that's not the only. This technique isn't the only way you can be considered stronger, but it is a way and. In Gojo's case, well, he hasn't really done much to show that he's, like, quote-unquote strong, and what I mean by that is, like, physical strength. He hasn't really done much to show that he's fast, aside from just being known faster than uh, Naobito, and he's like, oh, he can, like, beat up Jogo and stuff. He has these but very, we... like, lukewarm feats, right? These very mediocre feats, whereas Sukuna has these same feats, but almost better in almost every scenario. He, he example, terrifies, um, like, um, I just want to go on Mahito for a minute. He terrifies uh, yeah, Mahito to the example. point where he has to evolve his domain to an entirely new thing just to avoid fighting Sukuna. But the second he sees Gojo, he runs towards him and tries to fight him hand to hand. Mm -hmm. We have, like, Mahito earlier in the series, like, uh, in the versus Mahito arc saying shit, like, yeah, I, I don't care about this Gojo, dude. I know he, like, beat up Jogo, right? But if this three finger Sukuna has revived a full power, like it's over, it's GG. Like, there's nothing they can do. And, and then with the Jogo scaling, we know like in the Shibuya subway that um Jogo is actually like able to tag infinity. I I've seen people say things like, yeah, well, like the, the people were there to restrict Gojo's movement. But if you don't like recall, he was like walking on their heads with infinity. It's a lot more consistent for that to just be talking about his attack like red or blue. And not like his movement speed or anything, or reaction speed. And, and then this same Gojo, or sorry, Jogo, is getting like blitzed like over and over repeatedly by Sukuna, who's like barely trying. He, he's like memeing on him the entire time, saying like, "Yeah, I'll fight you with like fire as well, right?" So you just have this like level of presence as well. The Sukuna is just like this more imposing figure. It's stated things like uh, in the Golden Age. He was way more feared than Jogo is now, and the sorcerers in the Golden Age are stronger than the ones now. We can get into yeah. that uh, yeah, Jujutsu uh, sorcery soon if you want. Yeah, recently the fan book came out, or relatively recently at the time of like this video, but the fan book came out, and Akutami she went into Shihi, went into like a lot of depth on different things. Most of it is more background lore and just interesting tidbits for different characters but there are some very key things and a lot of it is to do with the high end era the golden age of techniques as ghetto puts it um and a lot of things in this era are okay well back in the high end era the three great families the gojo family which had limitless and six eyes users or like limitless users to begin with they had the Kamo family who were all manipulating blood. They were just like great blood manipulators. And they had the Zenon family who have these variety of different techniques. They produce people like yeah. Koji, right? And so here comes Sukuna. Protection, sorcery, and ten yeah. shadows technique. Here comes Sukuna just like sitting on top of them. <laughs> he's just, he's, he's just like it, way it, too it, strong. The for first, them. the first time we actually learn about Sukuna properly, it's actually Gojo is the one gassing him up. And he's saying, yeah, all of these people in the Golden Age, they, like, sharpened their skills. They tried to, like, form alliances and shit to take down Sukuna, and they still took an L. Right? Yeah, like, like, the entire, like, society, like, these Golden Age sorcerers, like, this, this peak of Jujutsu, as they put it, all come to jump Sukuna, and they're just like, mm, King of Curses, lol, and they beat the shit out of him. Oh, he beats the shit out of them, excuse me. He's just way yeah, too strong for them. Yeah. There's just, like so many subtle things that just point to it as well like especially in that scene alone where like why for sure he, oh gojo can like beat the uh, beat up sakuna but he's gassing him up to yuji to this extent well isn't yuji supposed isn't like yuji supposed to be the one that's supposed to like keep him in check to hold him down to have the will to hold mm -hmm. him down why would why is gojo telling yuji the jailer of sakuna to put it Mm -hmm. look, oh, look how strong this dude is. The golden age of sorcerers, like, peak jujutsu couldn't do anything against him. Yeah, by the way, you've got to, like, keep him locked inside, lol. What it seems to me, like, yeah. is that there, there's, um... hyping him up and then trying to put himself above that pedestal in order to keep Yuji in the mindset that even if he fails, there's someone else who can stop him. Which keeps there's, him motivated um... to continue to improve. Go ahead. 
Yeah, yeah. There, there's like back back in the same train of thought, like a lot of stuff in that scene. Just a little bit earlier, we see like Gojo fucking slamming one of his fingers into the wall. He's saying like, nobody can even destroy these things, right? They're they're always getting stronger and whatnot. And I, I've seen people say things like, oh, but they're like cursed objects. Of course they can't be destroyed. Except in the fan book, we find out that Sakuna can destroy these things as well. It's just like another yeah. little comparison, right? Um, but there's also the fact that, uh, uh what was it? In, in that same, uh, fan book statement, where it describes new sorcerers as being at the peak of Jujutsu sorcery, later in that, later in that paragraph, we actually see Gojo being called the strongest sorcerer, but there's, um, there's a little stipulation. They actually say he's the strongest modern sorcerer. Yeah. Almost to imply, right, that there are people back in this golden age, like they said, Pika Jujutsu Sorcery, that were above Gojo, right? Yeah. Because, like, even, for instance, even in the manga, just to expand on that, even in the manga, they say by the ha when he's like killing all of these curses inside Shibuya, they say by the hands of the strongest Jujutsu Sorcerer alive, not just the strongest mm -hmm. Jujutsu horse Sorcerer, but the one that's alive. So that kind of implies that in the past there have been people that have even surpassed him. And I would say that even currently there are people that surpass him in terms of overall power, but obviously within the case of JJK, like we've That's another it, video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but in, um, in JJK, they obviously refer to techniques and how that can make someone strong. So, yeah. I think the the best thing to do now would probably move on to what what I consider to be Sakuna's biggest advantage, which is a domain expansion. Of course. Yeah. Now, what what we find out, which is very very key when it comes to domain expansions, when they're first introduced in the uh, Jogo versus Gojo fight, is um if, if there's a domain struggle, who comes out on top, right? And, and the key, the fir the first thing that Gojo says, he doesn't say, you know power or the skill or right or whatever he says refinement and refinement's a really interesting word to use right it's not it's it's talking about like how well made your domain is right how much um i, I guess the finesse put into it right he, he does say there's things like uh, compatibility curse energy and whatnot but those are like almost after thoughts they're literally like written in smaller text in the speech bubble yeah the main thing that's focused on is refinement and what we have with Sakuna's domain is a very unique thing. He's able to realize his innate, innate domain into the physical world without a barrier. I, I don't think a lot of people understand exactly how a barrier is composed normally. If you want to talk about that, Valor. Yeah, so the way you'd normally construct a domain expansion is by creating this area out of your cursed energy and then manifesting the inside of the domain with your cursed technique your in your innate domain as they put it which is the inside of your like body the inside of your heart the inside of your soul it's the representation of you right so that's why when go when yuji pseudo dies he goes to his innate domain which is turns out to be sakuna's innate domain because their souls have combined together and what sakuna yep. is doing with his domain is he is able to manifest it so perfectly that he doesn't even need to make a barrier he just makes his domain he just plops it down and that that yeah. in and of itself is so like potent that it instantly makes a binding vow whether he's aware of it or not, or not that expands the domain's range uh, he can which he can control that range as well he he willingly decides to make it however big he wants which is just further explaining his control of his domain like we've rarely there ever seen I don't. Th I think the actually the only example of someone controlling how big their domain is is Mahito, who's who's like this prodigy who can constantly grow stronger yeah. and evolve um, rapidly. And Sakuna, those are the only two people that yep. have shown to be able to control the size of their domains. Just to expand a little on Mahito being a prodigy, Mahito is literally the dude who says, "Yeah, I like that. I'm gonna try it," and then he does it. Like, yeah. he says, yeah, I can probably try domain expansion now. Something that most Jujutsu sorcerers have to, like, work forever to do. Like, Nanami, who's a super experienced sorcerer. Gojo trusts him a lot, can't even do it. He's been working in Jujutsu sorcery for, like, decades. Mahito's like, yeah, I can probably do it now. Does it? Yeah, and Mahito's been alive see, for, like, a year at most or something? At most. Yeah, later in Shibuya, right? He, he experiences Gojo's, like, 0. 0.2 second domain. He's like, wow, that's pretty cool. Later in the fight against Tojo and Yuji. Yeah, it's like, I want to try that now. He just does it. He it's like it, yeah. Mahito is really, really like can do basically whatever he wants when he wants, and then even then, it's like further, further tying back into the thing we mentioned earlier. He literally does evolve his domain for the sole purpose of not having to deal with Sakuna. Right? So it's just like so many like little things that 
you won't really like pick up on if you're not trying to look for them if that makes yeah. sense and back to the sakuna thing um his domain yeah is when he manifests his domain this is the only statement in the entire series that explains the potency of a domain wow ever yeah they they directly the narrator comes in and says that sakuna's domain is a divine technique akin to paint having a painting on thin air which that's the only statement in the entire series in all prequel hidden inventory everything the novels everything it is the only statement that ties into the like the refinement the refinement yeah you know what they never talk what... about the refinement except for megami's case where they say how his domain is incomplete it... mm -hmm. yeah but I, like i said that's why the, the word choice is so important it's it's not it's about refinement it's not about how much cursed energy you put in you know but those are like afterthoughts uh and this isn't even like a one-time thing it's actually reiterated in the fan book that sakuna is like casting a truly divine technique and they say and i quote almost like a god they're, they're like really hyping up his domain and gojo is just like there's just nothing for his domain it's just got a good ability right but in yeah. terms of like the actual construction of the domain there's nothing for it and even if so. you don't even if you want to kind of grandstand mm -hmm. that oh well gojo's gojo has this immense amount of cursed energy baby gojo has more cursed energy right it's not we know that yuda actually has more cursed energy than gojo but and we also know that a lot of yuda's cursed energy involved rika and a lot of it is based upon rika um he, rika herself being actually being yuda's cursed a manifestation energy. of yeah. Energy, yeah and we see that in the fan book that sukuna is just straight up stronger than than um rika now you could say oh that's down to techniques that's down to de but we know that rika actually has like one of the best techniques in the entire series of actually yeah he, he can it. copy any technique like i don't know how you yeah. get much better than that so it's likely not referring to that it's probably more likely referring to stats and okay well how do you aside from physicals like the peak peak physicals is toji right so well, how else do they improve at, their at least their, for like, a human stats? at least for a human yeah. yeah for a human well how else do they improve their stats well cursed spirits are made up of cursed energy and the way sorcerers gauge them is through cursed energy so the more cursed this, energy you have the stronger you are as a cursed spirit right and in the humans after you peak out in your physicals you start measuring in cursed energy too this is also like super consistent right because we know when ghetto's talking about rika the first thing he says is the ability to unconditionally copy any technique and then after that he's remarking for quote unquote boundless cursed energy well obviously it's not boundless there is a limit to it as we find out all right we know Yuta can run out of cursed energy but it's still like a a, uh, a huge factor of like why she's regarded to be so powerful so like if we already know she has basically the best technique in the series she can copy any other technique unconditionally then it just makes sense for her to be referring to like power exactly yeah and time segueing to something else is probably a lot a lot of things surrounding sakuna and shibuya especially with like just these small things like ghetto having sakuna as a contingency plan in case the prison realm doesn't work which literally means that oh if the prison realm doesn't stop gojo then sakuna will but and yeah he, that brings to the idea oh well why didn't they just summon sakuna then and have him kill gojo mm -hmm. right why didn't they just do that that would have been like easy we, we find it. out well, we find out actually really on in the story right he's saying yeah we don't know whose side Sakuna will actually be on, so we don't have to like. Exactly. We don't want to resort to having to fight him, maybe. Right? So and we're just gonna even, take the safer option first. And upon that, the, the literally the instance they get a chance to talk to Sakuna, Jogo gets killed by him. The the second he gets to ask <laughs> it, like he he doesn't even ask a favor. He Sakuna demands him to like ask. He's like, okay, what do you want? He's like, hey, can you like, can you like kill a bunch of humans? And he's like, if you could touch me, and then he kills him. Like, even before that. We see Gojo, or not Gojo, Jogo's looking at him, and, and Sakuna tells him to kneel. He, like, bends down a little bit, and then Sakuna just chops his head off because he's like, that wasn't low enough. Like, he's just so unpredictable. Right? Yeah. They just don't want to have to deal with that. Sakuna's this there, wild the whole, um, that they can't control. And it's like. There, there's literally a call. Sorry, a, a call back to that scene when Nanami is trapped in Mahito's domain. There's a whole statement of, like, in Dai Yuji, there must be something that is not touched, right? He lives only guided by his displeasure. Whether Nanami dies or Mahito dies, he doesn't care. He like only cares about himself. Right? Um, that's another funny part about that. I was yeah, gonna bring that yeah, up. I know you're about to bring up. No, Continue. <laughs> no, the funniest part about that is in is the manga. 
Um, I'm sure you're all aware of this statement where Gojo says, I alone am the honored one throughout all heavens and earth or whatever, right? That's a self-proclaimed statement for him while he's like literally gassing himself up because he got like an amp against Toji. He's like basically high. Um, and then we have here a narrator statement for Sukuna. It's just another one of those comparisons, just putting him on this like pedestal. And we know they're both arrogant, but it's almost like Akutami's taking the measure since he knows that to make sure people are aware. It's a narrator saying that Sukuna is the honored one. Yeah, well, it's just one just of those like... things that like, she, sure, Akutami will go around saying, "Okay, I made Gojo to be this the top of the top of the chain. I made Power him dealing. so everyone had the the easiest time figuring out who was the strongest. He was born as to he, his initial concept was to be the strongest. All these different things, but we know that well, Akutami is actually a lot more subtle than people give her credit or him him credit for. Like those statements can be true, but they can also be like." rephrased and reinterpreted to mean things that are consistent with this line of logic and with this line of scaling so the initial oh he was initially born as this concept of strength well it's just referring to gojo at the time because we know that gojo initially as soon as she made gojo he wasn't the strongest gojo himself literally says there are people stronger than him in volume zero Ghetto. he said he said <laughs> Ghetto is too strong for him there's other times we all, we all where he said know that would threaten his life that's just another instance and there is gojo that's him it initially we also find out, once again in the fan book, that at Volume Zero, uh, Akutami hadn't even thought of any plans to introduce Sukuna, right? So it's just like, there, there's no reason to like even include that there. So even before Sukuna's a thing, there's no need for a comparison between them. Yeah. Akutami's still showing there's like characters that can like threaten Gojo. So it's literally like, oh sure, his initial concept can be the strongest, and that can be really consistent, but then she made Sakuna, who's just now this concept of like strength, who now is the strongest. Like it, it can just like also both be the, the power healing. It, it can literally be okay, yeah. Gojo's the power healing for like the human Sakuna from the curses. There's like a whole bunch of comparisons. Gojo, strongest living sorcerer, Sakuna, strongest curse, king of curses, all this, right? They're, they're very, uh, they're, they're an obvious parallel between them. Another thing that's fun to note, or I guess you can you can interpret it any which way you want, but the way I interpret it is, it's funny how whenever someone needs to measure strength, they're always using Sukuna as a measuring <laughs> stick. They're using his fingers as a measuring stick. Like, Ghetto, or in this case, Naruto Shikama, or whoever, whatever name you want to apply to him, he know he has 300 years of experience, right? He's been alive for, like, a super long time. And when he, he needs like, to compare Jogo's strength to someone, he uses Sukuna's fingers. He doesn't use, oh, you're probably yeah. like a fifth of Gojo's strength. Or you're like this percent of Gojo's strength. He goes to Sukuna instead. He uses this person as the measuring stick. Yeah. Even it's, with, it's like, even like with when you, Sukuna's exponential differences in his fingers. You, it's like you have, okay, a number line. Zero is like the worst. Ten is the best in the verse. And you're measuring it with like Sukuna fingers. That would imply that the highest Akuna fingers would be like the highest in the verse, if that makes sense, right? Ghetto definitely should be one of the most reliable characters in the series, right? Like, oh, yeah. everything he says is, is accurate, right? He's, but, he's uh, spent the last hundred years or so, pla like, trying to develop the, the, the future of the world. He's been trying to improve these different curse techniques, he's been trying to make all these different plans, he's been experimenting, they say his curiosity knows no ends and that's why he did these terrible things to these different people, he, and he's reached his full potential, he's done all of these things, yet, and he personally, he might have actually known Sukuna himself, he was alive during the Iron Era, so he probably knew Sukuna, he probably, or knew of him, and probably witness the things he's done, and he still goes to Sukuna. He still thinks Sakuna is a worthy contingency plan for Gojo. Even at 15 fingers, not even 20, just 15. It's also funny how we know, like, Rika can threaten Gojo's life. Albeit, it's probably a week. Yeah, this is the, the Gojo. The, current, the current Rika, Rika, right? Um, but, but regardless, we know Ghetto's had interactions with Rika. He's like, yeah, I really want Rika. Like, super, super strong. But then... I'm around current time. Gato's just like, nope. Let's just go to Sukuna. Right. Yeah. There's no need to no need to bother with. Re and okay, we're well, okay. We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna slow down. We're gonna move on from that. Yeah. But uh. But, but um. That's basically all there is to it for now. Actually, no. There's still one more. The oh, there's chapter. one more. Oh, oh yes, yeah, so we have to address that. We have to talk about that. Oh my god. I've seen the degeneracy surrounding that. Oh. Okay. So you want to? So, you so uh. <laughs> 
yeah, we, we can we can start this. So, the statement in the most recent chapter, like we have Yuji talking to Yuda. So essentially, they're talking, right? And Yuji's basically saying, uh, Sakuna's like wants something to do with Megami, right? He he's, he did some shit in Shibuya, and I've already eaten like almost all of his fifteen fingers, right? Or, or I've eaten fifteen of his fingers. I've almost eaten them all. He said, I still think I'd be able to like remain control. But if I ever switch with Sakuna, don't hesitate to kill me. I think you could do that. And a lot of people, they see this, they just jump to conclusions. Ah, you, Yuda over 15 finger and 20 finger Sakuna. Easy, stated. Uh, there's like several problems with that. For one, Yuji has like no idea how strong either of them are. Like, after, after, uh, Sakuna like demolishes Shibuya, Yuji like wakes up, he's like, did I do all of this? He's like, get PTSD. And there's like no way to say he knows how strong 20 fingers is at all. And then the biggest thing here is that Yuji's not saying, I think you have the ability to kill me. He's saying, don't hesitate to kill me, right? Don't, don't like get emotionally like attached or anything, right? Like, it's, it's, it's obviously talking about Megami. We have Megami's development, right? In the first chapter, he's saying, you're a curse. I'm going to kill you. And then we find out he like starts to, uh, road towards Yuji as a person, he becomes friends with him, they go on missions together, he obviously doesn't want to, like, like, kill him with, like, no emotion or anything. If Megami had to do it, he'd obviously have some level of, like, emotional pushback or whatever. So he's saying, Yuda, really I think you would have the ability, yeah, he's like, I think you just have the ability to, like, cut my head off because if I, like, am transformed. The weird thing I, is, I don't like, think you would, like, it, the weird thing in top, the way, uh, it's hard to cut you off, but the weird way of in top, no, you're good. like this is, Saying, oh, well, Yuda can, like, kill 20 fingers Sakuda, right? Well, that, this Yuji was, like, you know, throw, putting hands on that Yuda. He was, like, he was swapping up. He was, you know, he was putting, he was putting some moves on him. Like, is Yuji well, we suddenly now capable breath. of, like, is Yuji suddenly now capable of, like, beating the shit out of 20 fingers Sakuna despite every interaction with Sakuna and literally being like, man, you're so fucking weak. Like, why am I attacking yeah. you? Yeah. What's more consistent, um, like, that when he's, he doesn't want, like, his close personal friends to have, like, this traumatic experience of having to kill one of their best friends, who he spent, like, two years with at this point, or a year or so with. He's been, like, he's gotten to know them, like, like, Megami in this scene is actually begging Yuji to help him with his sister. Oh, yeah, by the way, I've got to, uh, sorry to, like, sorry to, like, cut you short. I know you want me to help your sister and all, but can you kill me if Sakuna comes out? I know I'm your best friend and all, but, you know, just, just, like, yeah. just, like slide the knife right here, bro. What, what? Yeah, it's, it's just... It's just more of a resolve thing, right? Yeah. I know you have, like, the guts to do it instantly, right? If, I, if I'm, like, transformed. That's why hesitate is the key word here. And it's not even He's like, not oh, saying Sakuna would have complete control over me. Like, Yuji could still be putting resistance on that could maybe even nerf Sakuna. Or, oh, he can't... Like, in Chapter 1, when Sakuna kept switching with Yuji in and out, it could literally be a situation like that. We don't know what yeah. that, that context is. Because we, Yuji himself is literally like, hey, yeah, Sakuna's getting stronger inside of me. He's like, he's kind of dangerous, bro. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just way more consistent for the statement to be talking about resolve than Yuji comparing the strength of someone he has no idea how strong they are to someone he was just putting the hands on while weakened and suppressed. Yeah, right? and it the, just doesn't make sense. The way this relates back to uh, to Gojo is the fact that Yuda thinks that Gojo is better than him. But he's not he's not directly saying that Gojo's stronger than him. Or um he's what he's saying there is okay, well, because Gojo doesn't use any cursed energy, he's just the best. He's his techniques make him stronger than him, despite him having more cursed energy. It's his six eyes that he doesn't expend any cursed energy when he's using his techniques, so he can spam red, whereas Yuda can run yep. out of cursed energy. The important bit to, to realize here, though, is it's talking about technique with the six eyes. It doesn't mean Gojo can en endlessly like amp his physicals with cursed energy because that's not a technique. That's just raw cursed energy manipulation. Yeah. So what we do have here is Yuda would be able to achieve higher physicals because he has way more cursed energy, or so he he has at least more than Gojo. I'd assume it's by a sub substantial amount. It is implied. Um. So, so what we have here, right, would be Bakuna over holding back Yuji, who's also stated to be weakened, relative to, like, Yuda. You can say he's holding back, but that's fine. Even if he is holding back, the amount of cursed energy he's displaying is still over Gojo's that we know of. And so then it just ties back into Gojo there. 
And there's also just like other odd bits like, oh, here's Gojo implying that Maharaga, the eight handles, he can like, oh, you know what I'm getting at, Megami? He he's talks to Megami saying, hey, this, this summon that you have, it killed a dude with the Limitless and the Six Eyes a while ago. You know what I'm getting at, Megami? And then Megami he's himself is like, he kind of like questions Gojo. He's like, I don't think I could ever be as strong as you. Like directly, he acknowledges what Gojo is implying to him, and he, he's kind of disagreeing with it. And then we see Sakuna, well suppressed, just like poking at it, violating like, like a bear is in like a cage. He's just got a stick and he's poking at it, and he keeps laughing <laughs> at it when it does stuff. Right? He, he he's just toying with it. He thinks of it as like a little pet. He's like impressed. Or, oh, you sent me into a building. Wow, that's not bad. And then he proceeds to like violate, violate it. it. He yeah. levels a city <laughs> while beating it. <laughs> He literally says, like, yeah, maybe if I was back in, like, three fingers, he might have been able to beat me. He literally, he literally carries its head like a, like a hula hoop. He just rolls it to his character. <laughs> Throughout the entire story, Sukuna just has all of these implications. They never outright state it, because they leave a lot of Sukuna, just like his appearances, they leave most of Sukuna behind the scenes. Because Sakuna is supposed to be like this kind of pseudo ghetto antagonist, right? Ghetto and Sakuna both act a lot behind the scenes, whereas Ghetto is just off screen doing stuff. But Sakuna is always, always there, attached to the protagonist, right? He's got these that inner demon trope. He's always watching, he's always observing, and yet he's still able to have this massive effect. But no one's ever actually able to sit down and watch Sakuna do things for an extended amount of time and survive, right? So, does Sakuna they have this die. reputation, right? We, every time we're told or we get these implications that Sakuna's stronger, it's either from a narrator or someone who's been alive for, a, like, Ghetto for a really long time and who knows a lot about Sakuna, or the fan book, these or, or author statements, right? All these, like, or, um, omnipotent characters are telling the, the us only other, characters, excuse me. The only other, like, instance I can think of that isn't like that is just a legend statement, which is being dashed up by Gojo himself. He's saying, like, yeah. This dude, beast. Yeah. Don't want to mess with him. Whenever they talk about Sakuna, they're either referring to his law, or it's from author statements, or it's from narrator statements, or anything like this. These are omniscient characters. Whereas with it's not like, Joe, remember it's that a lot one of time where like things. Exactly. It's not like you remember that one time Sakuna blew up that building. That was super impressive. Yeah, because most of the time they're not alive to see that. They die in the blast, kind of. No one's the, able the only to other time... explain Sakuna's strength because they're usually yeah. dead yeah. by the time he they get to. It. <laughs> And the only time we ever see Sakuna, like, who's actually alive being used as a measuring stick, is, like, a massively holding back three-finger Sakuna, and that's, like, yeah. it. And the reason, like, that's important is because, oh, I well, look at all these different characters saying how strong Gojo is, like, narrative implications, right? Well, the problem is all of this depends on their knowledge and what they know and what they can say about Sakuna, but most of them, A, haven't even seen Sakuna, or B, when they have seen Sakuna, they're terrified to go anywhere near him, aka Mahito, aka Ghetto, right? Like, they considered fighting Gojo in hand-to-hand -hand combat for like two minutes straight over just letting Sakuna out of his cage, kind of. They had like, this plan of sealing him in a box took a whole year of prep time versus they, they literally putting like, ten fingers I, into Yuji and sending him on his way. Yep, yeah, they have to like construct all these complex curtains, they've got to like plan out all these things, they have to hire all these henchmen, they have to like, you know, get these like group of special grade unregistered spirits they have to plan out this whole thing to trap gojo and in this time gojo's getting stronger he's not just sitting down he's actively yeah. fighting and improving mm -hmm. like all of this but, time but we spent can't, just trying we to can't trap let him this, when sakuna's right there and they're like yeah, no no nope, nope, not touching that <laughs> they literally have like some of their fingers in their possession they just don't want to fuck with them <laughs> Yeah, like they it's had not, so it's many not until, to, to act. It's, it's not until out. they like they were just too scared to. It's it's literally once like, um, we we only see Sakuna come out like once Gojo's like already been disposed of, and Joe goes just like, yeah, I'm gonna give you these fingers because uh, yeah, I need you to do something for me, Big Chief. Yeah. Uh, there's like even even there's just other things like you know how Toji only goes after the strongest. So we see that Toji directly senses Sakuna's presence, and he 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 just refuses to go fight it. He keeps fighting Megumi, so that means that Saku Toji, the man who's in this like blind state, can only think of fighting the strongest, sensed Sakuna and did not want to go anywhere near that.
Kona's feared more by the people. Oh, uh, I think I touched on that. Did you? Um. Yeah, I said like, yeah, these like golden age sorcerers. He's way more feared than Gojo, and these golden age sorcerers are like already above present day. Yeah, and that's exactly. when I like brought I in the stipulation like, of Gojo. Gojo's, Gojo's, Gojo's more feared. Gojo, Gojo's more feared in the than no, Sakuna. He's not so. Yeah, but he's not. Uh, it's like. When, when have we ever seen Gojo scare someone? It was like Jogo once. He intimidated Jogo, uh, the man who's known for being bitch made. Yeah, I think. That's yeah, I think that's, I think that's a good place to, you know, I think we can wrap up. Don't disrespect Sakuna. Gojo's ass. Yeah, it's been. A... Thanks for watching, everyone. This video took a lot of effort, drugs, and psychotic breakdowns to produce. This video was different to my usual style and is more in the format of a podcast. And in the famous words of Joe Rogan, sucking cock is a two-player game. Let me know what videos you want to see next, and I'll see you all next time.